Hi everyone. Hi mom. Okay, this is sort of a, <laughs> it's a tutorial um, that I kind of already started and then my son phone so I had to stop the video and delete it. So I've already started kind of what I wanted to show you. Um, what I'm working on is tags and it's using these um, what are they? Time cards. I have loads of these time cards. They're a nice weight for making tags and uh, anyway I was watching a Tim Holtz and I thought I'd play and I thought to myself you know I always try and do things cheaper so I did however buy his uh, foil tape and it comes in different size packages this one is the 6x12 and you get about um, um, probably 12 tags in total. I've done mine at three, yeah, it would be, uh, three by six, so you'd get uh, four per sheet. So you'd get 12 tags in total. But um, it's not cheap here. I paid nine dollars for, for this and you only get three sheets. So that's kind of pricey and of course I was looking for ways of saving money. So I purchased this Suk Wang. Now it's a before I cut it up, it's about eight and a half by eleven inches in total in size, and I paid two ninety five here in Canada. I don't know if you can get the sheets in the U.S. Um, Suk Wang is the exact same thing as Score Tape, so if if it's set, you know if Score Tape sells it as sheets, that's what I used, and I used just cheapo dollar store dollar twenty five for twenty five feet of uh, tin foil and I created this so you just cut your you know your tape the size of your tag and then you smooth out a piece of uh, aluminum foil I just use my finger and give it a good rub and that takes out most of the creasing and the reason I want to do that is because I want to stamp on it so anyway um, that's what I did and then you simply peel the back and then lay your tin foil on there and then I just use my finger again to burnish it on there and then I got this. Now I leave a border because the alcohol ink does sort of spread out and I didn't want it to seep underneath my tag. Okay, the next step. You need your tool which has a felt pad on it. Can't use the rubber one that you would use for inking, it's different. And then the colors that I used, and I'm going to put some more on there. This one's called Latte. And I put some here and here. Close them up right away in case you knock it over, as I'm prone to do. And then this one is called Terracotta. And I put that in the center in between the two lattes. And then I swirled it all over to get a background. So I'm just going to do that again. Just kind of like this. And then I, st you know, started stippling a little bit. And you just keep building up. So your first coat, because it's aluminum, you won't get a real heavy look. And depending on what you want it to look like. Um, if you swirl it around you're going to get more of a flat pattern. If you pounce it you're going to get more of this reaction where it kind of looks like oil. Mm, yeah oil dots. You know how they separate and they move. So that's what you'd get if you stipple. Now I just kind of went around the edge bottom and opposite corner because I want to create a little bit of a frame and I want to leave this sort of blank because I'm going to stamp in that spot and then I added the gold mixative this is different than the other you have to shake it it's got the the ball in it and it doesn't spread like the regular alcohol ink does. So you do need, if you want just dots, then great, just, you know, kind of splatter it on there. But if you want um, 
pouncing marks, then you put it on your pad and then you pounce it. I've got enough on there, so I'm not going to add more. Okay, so then I used this stamp, and these are, it's a Crafter's Companion, and it's by Sheena, and it is called Time Traveler. And you also get the two um, words, word stamps with it. And it, they do sell separately a die. Now, I'm really disappointed in the die because it doesn't fit the stamp. So it's supposed to, but it doesn't. So if I line up that bottom part, the edge of the rubber stamp ends here, but the edge of the die is way up here. So it, it doesn't match. You get quite a big border at the top. But, you know, I went ahead and I cut it off and I'll show you what I did. So this tag here I stamped out. Then I stamped it and cut one out, but I had to cut off the top in order to make it line up. Anyway, that's another thing I was playing with. Uh, so we're not using this, we're not using the die right now, we're going to use the stamp. Okay. We're going to just use um, the Versamark because I'm going to use black embossing powder. Mine is from Stampendous. You can use anything. It doesn't matter. I'm going to need a scrap piece of paper. And I'm going to just ink up my stamp. I'm going to hand stamp it. I'm not going to use anything else. It's uh, kind of organic. And I don't want it fully on the stamp, on the, sorry, on the tag. So I'm going to put it right about there. Just make sure you push down everywhere. Lift it up. Then take your embossing powder. I hope this is showing for you guys. I don't know if that light's bad or not. And I'm not going to go too heavy because I'm going to just tip it. Let it catch everywhere. Okay, well, that's pretty good. I think I missed a spot, but I don't think it matters too much. Okay, we're just going to get rid of this first. I think this is the third time I've tried videotaping this tutorial. So I have a few tags. Now when you use a heat gun on aluminum foil, it's going to warp, but it's easy to bend it back. to do. See, I love that wrinkling after. It looks really cool. But you can see why I wanted it flat to start with, so that you can make sure you get your stamp all the way on there. Then I'm going to take my pad again, and I'm going to drip on, this one's called Stream. I love this color, especially for steampunk. It just looks so pretty. 
and I'm going to just blot it and move it around a little bit. just adds a little something. <clears throat> okay, next step is I'm going to trim off my foil. I'll do it this way. Sorry, I'm wearing the wrong glasses, so I'm having difficulty seeing here. <laughs> Yeah, just having that little bit of border with the tin foil helps keep the uh, ink off the back of your tag. All right, so this is what we've got so far. Now what I want to do is I want to create the tag look and I just completely eyeball this, you guys. So I'll trim off one corner and then I'll flip it over and put it up to this corner. And then just kind of use it as a bit of a guide. Okay. There's your tag shape. Next. What I like to do is, um, oh, I forgot my black. No, I didn't. It's right here. I also have black alcohol ink. Then I'll take my pad and I just go along the edge here with the black. Okay. Now, if you don't want it all over your table or whatever, you can go ahead and put your paper back on there. Oh, it's kind of got uh, embossing powder. Hang on. Okay. Make sure you're in camera. And all I'm going to do is push down along the edge here to create sort of a grungy border along the edge. And how much or how little is really up to you. Got embossing powder all over the back of the tag. so you can see it. Okay. It finishes it off really nice. Then the other thing I like to do is add the hole. Now if you don't want just a straight hole, you can do something fun. If you have this uh, punch, which is an EK corner punch, so if I punched out, that's the little corner I would get. Really cute. I don't think I had that in all the way. Go. Just a real cute little corner, small. But what I use it for is I take a strip and ink it up. Where's my ink pad? And I'm just going to use some archival ink. And again, if you don't want it all over your all over your craft mat. take that and I just 
Oh, I've got it upside down. Oh, brilliant. Sorry, I'm totally off camera. Yeah, enough. Just so it's not cream. I didn't want cream. Okay. Alrighty. Then you take your little punch, and I do it upside down so that I can see what I'm doing, and just line it up the best you can so that it's somewhat even. I don't know if I have something in there that's preventing that. There we go. Okay, so you get that. Then I cut it off to about the length that I think I'm going to need, which should be usually what I'll do is just sort of give it a bit of a bend and guess as to the size. It doesn't have to be exact, but you definitely want it long enough so you can get it back in here. And then I just line that up so it's somewhat even. Okay. I'll just that. And then just fold it in half. And then I need my glue. Again, eyeball it. Okay. Give it a good push. Make sure that it's nice and stuck. And then these, I literally bought them at the dollar store. I know Dollar Tree has them because I saw them there the other day. And then I just guess where I want it. There you go. There's your tag. So you can write on the back. And again, I did it upside down. <laughs> did I? Yep. <laughs> that's twice I've done that. <laughs> Clearly, I'm an upside down kind of girl. So that's it. That's the tag. I thought it turned out really, really cool. Now, the other thing I did to mine was I took a stencil and you can just lay it over wherever you want take your I just use a cheapo um, fiber microfiber cloth from the dollar store how can you tell I love the dollar store then take a little bit of your alcohol blending solution just a little little bit just where the tip of my finger is I'm just gonna put a tiny bit And then I just lay this over, and then I just randomly, whoop, this one's really pointy, so maybe just pounce it. That might work a little better. I'm missing the spot. Now the trick is don't move it. Haha. -ha. Use a little bit more. 
don't think I quite had enough. You don't need a lot when it's um, a wider mm, holes, if you know what I mean. Like if, uh, like say this one, it has bigger spots, so you don't need as much. It's much easier to rub, rub it off there. And I want it random. I don't want it to actually be able to read it. <laughs> Just to know that there are some letters. Okay, then you pull that off. I don't know if it'll show on this. And I have completely the wrong glasses on. Nope, that's not going to work. It's too small. I think I will do this one. See what happens. in here too. Okay, let's see. There you go. That's better. I can see that now. Oh, it also... Uh, it, that's cool. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, let's get it up nice and close. It actually embossed in there as well, as took some of the color out. So it's very faint, I think, too, um, because I did do that on the other ones and it worked way better. But I I did that before I actually did the heat, in, heat setting here. So that might, uh, this one too, this one I did pretty quick. I didn't let it sit for as long as I did with this one. This one had a long time to actually sit, but it does show. Um, I, I hope you can see it on there. I don't know if you can, but anyway, you can, you know, do that with the blending solution. It removes the alcohol. So you go back down to the silver a little bit. And, and again, if, if you've done something and you're like, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> Take your blending solution, just wipe it off. So now if you wanted, you could go ahead and uh, spray this to seal it with like Krylon and then it won't ever move. It'll, it'll be there permanently, but it's super bendy and you can write on it. It's not um, raised, so you can't write on it properly. I think they turned out really neat. I love this stamp. I think it's really cool. So how fun. Um, if you don't have a lot of stamps, don't use them. Use stencils, you know, or, or just do the alcohol ink or, yeah, just have fun. Play. And I'm hoping I can do one more tutorial for you, but I'm not going to promise. Um, it's countdown time now for me. So <laughs> anyway, uh, I will talk to you when I get back. Thanks for watching, you guys. Bye.